when you step on the gas. So there, there are some other situations. When you step on the gas in, a, in, a, in an American carburetor, you have an accelerator pump. It squirts extra fuel in there because you need a richer mixture. The way that this does it um, is by having oil in the top and this damper. This is a valve that allows it to flow one way and not as quickly the other. So when you have this in place and oil in the dash pot, when you step on the gas it is going to slow down the progress of the air piston going up. And what that's going to effectively do is you're still going to get a faster volume of air because remember you've got the throttle open so there's vacuum. It's going to end up with a richer mixture and basically does exactly the same thing that an accelerator pump would do. So it just dampens the travel. It does still move up so that as you're accelerating it can correct itself and that's basically how it works. So you've got the accelerator pump, you have an infinitely adjustable supply of air and fuel uh, which is really handy. These are actually better in many ways than a lot of other carburetors. I like them better if you're just doing street driving uh, this design is going to be better than putting a set of Webers on your car because with Webers or a lot of other carburetors you've got different uh, circuits. You've got an idle circuit, you've got a circuit for when you open the throttle, you've got the accelerator pump. Uh, carburetors get really complicated really quickly. Not so with this. Uh, an SU and a Stromberg the principle is incredibly simple. You get more vacuum which happens when you open the throttle. It raises the air piston changes the mixture for you to keep it perfect. When you do need a richer mixture, that's what the oil in the dash pot is for. Uh, just engine oil, by the way, is fine for that. Uh, that's what the, the manual is going to specify anyway. It's going to slow the travel of the piston going up, which is going to give you a temporarily mi richer mixture. Really cool. So in principle, that's how it works. It does not matter if you've got a Stromberg or an SU. Uh, they work exactly the same way, at least as far as that goes. And that's all you've got. So now we've got to pay attention, well, what are all the bolt-on kind of things that go on the side of these? Um, and we're not going to get into the auto choke because, frankly, I just don't like auto chokes. But uh, there's, there's going to be a starter box that goes here. Uh, you might think of it as the choke. Uh, there's a temperature, temperature compensator, and then you've got the bypass valve. And those are the common things that you're going to see on these Strombergs. So let's start with those. Actually, let's start with the throttle because we just need to put that in. sure to use some kind of thread locker here. You don't want to have these come loose. I believe the originals were actually pinned on the other side just to widen out the other end. Don't over tighten it because you'll strip it, but make sure it's very snug. Okay. Okay, so yeah, that's the operation. Throttle opens, vacuum increases. That's going to raise the air piston. Actually, it's going to raise it slowly, but it's going to raise the air piston. That's going to keep the mixture so that it's ideal for the engine's operating conditions. And you affect that mixture by using this tool in some of these, in a Stromberg anyway. You'll turn this, um, you can raise the needle or lower it. Uh, 
Uh, we talked about the oil inside the dash pot. That's going to dampen the, the movement of the air piston going up, so you're going to get a temporary richer mixture. That's how you would adjust it on this Stromberg. Some of them have an adjustable jet on the bottom, not unlike an SU carb, where instead of moving the needle up and down, that's fixed in the piston like with an earlier Stromberg. Instead, what you are doing is you are raising and lowering the jet. if I'm not mistaken. Okay. So what you're doing is you're raising and lowering the jet. This is threaded in. This is the jet here, which actually lets... Here's the choke on it. When you, when you pull on the choke, you are, there's a cable that comes through, attaches to this, and you are moving the jet down. You're making the, rich, the mixture richer because, again, as the jet travels down the needle, you've got the thinner part of the needle in the jet. You're making the mixture richer. And so that's what you're setting up here. But it's also got a spring right there to keep pressure on it. And by adjusting the threads here, you are raising and lowering where the jet is at its stock position. So this is how you're going to change mixture on the earlier Strombergs and on most SUs is by moving this. And you want to do it one thread at a time. Uh, there is a spec in the shop manual for how to get it set up correctly for a neutral position. That is how you're going to be adjusting it. Okay, let's talk about chokes now. I uh, just mentioned this, but just as a brief demonstration, when you pull on the choke with, a, with an SU carb, uh, let's see, down this tube, there's a cable that's going to go through. That cable is going to attach to this lever, and when you do that and pull it, it's going to lower the jet, which is going to give you a richer mixture because it's traveling down the needle. Um, that's as simple as it is. The other thing that it does, and let's see here, when the throttle's in place, you can see that you've got uh, this screw right here. It's going to ride on the cam. And so when you, when you uh, move this, and this one's a bit frozen because it hasn't been rebuilt yet, but when you move it, it's going to open the throttle slightly. Let's see if I can move this and manipulate it with one hand. There we go. There. When the choke is out, it opens the throttle slightly, choke goes back in, throttle closes. So, and it's not very much, but you can see the movement. See, here's how it looks at the throttle. Very small movement, but you can see it opening just a little bit, and that's going to give you some extra RPM. So we need to accomplish that on a Stromberg. And that, uh, that's where this, what they call the starter box goes. Okay, so with the starter box, you can call it the choke if you want to. We're going to temporarily set this in place here. First thing you're going to want is faster RPM. You can see it rides on that cam. And this one's actually very poorly adjusted. Let's fix that right now. Always make sure to hurt your fingers while you're doing this. Makes it more fun to work on it later. want is that sort of a movement. Opens the throttle slightly. 
and I believe there's a spec actually it's probably something like an eighth of an inch but you're gonna have like a, a drill bit that you'll put between the two and if it just barely fits between there then it's set correctly set this wherever the idle actually makes sense for your car because uh, you can adjust a little bit more from there but when you open the choke it's going to pull on a cable going up here it's going to open the throttle slightly you can see that here and that little bit is all that you need so we can adjust that and kind of fine tune it but let's just lock it down for now back off. Let's go ahead and open this up. Inside here, you've actually got two plates. And if I pull them apart, I'll kind of show you. Of course, the spring is not helping here. Let's just move that out. Okay, so how this works, there's actually two plates here. And I'm not going to take it apart because it's, uh, it's peened over and I don't want to. But maybe you can kind of see there's a channel in there okay and what that's allowing is for fluid to travel uh, between these holes here and this bigger one here so why is that important well in the carb you've got a couple of important ones this is just a, a pivot point you've got a hole here which see right in there where that's coming out so that is after the air piston straight into the throttle however much the throttle is open and remember the throttle opens a little bit when you pull the choke and it's going into there okay so that's this has a vacuum that is that is drawing whatever happens to be in this little cavity here so what's in that cavity well typically nothing because you've got this just kind of sitting here and it's just against a flat machined uh, surface so it's not drawing anything however when you rotate the choke this cavity is going to start to line up with these holes one two three four of them so the farther you twist it the richer the mixture goes and remember there's a passage that's so going to draw whatever is on this side of it well this this bigger end goes to this hole this carb is together where that's going there's a starter box and another one that hole is going to be right back here it's going to go down this tube and right in here which is in the float bowl so as you open up these holes it's going to start pulling from here which is pulling from here which is pulling the fuel out of the float bowl should really make sense but um, when you when you twist the choke you get a richer mixture because you are introducing the ability to draw more fuel in it's going around the needle has nothing to do with it it's drawing more fuel in and that's how the choke works so it opens up the throttle gives you a richer mixture again in an SU what you're doing you're getting the richer mixture same idea the cam just opens the throttle a little bit and it is also lowering the jet which gives you a richer mixture two different methods of accomplishing the same thing the earlier Strombergs are going to be that same way so let's put this back together make sure before you assemble it, 
you want it to be set up so that as you twist it, these four holes line up with there. So you just kind of compare it. Generally it's going to be on this machined flat surface, but when you twist it to open it, those four holes are going to rotate upwards. So you want the four holes to be right around there when it's at just kind of a standard position. Then you can keep assembling it. Otherwise you've got it in backwards. Some of these have a gasket, some don't. If there was a gasket on it before, I'll put it back. If not, don't worry about it. This shouldn't leak if it's assembled properly. Okay. Double check the operation. Make sure it snaps back. Not all of them had a spring. Uh, sometimes you, uh, you might have a stiffer cable that just moves it up and down. I like the spring-loaded ones better. And that's that. Uh, by the way, not strictly important right now, this is how you adjust your idle. It's going to be this screw here. And when you turn this up and down, you can maybe see the throttle moving slightly. That's going to determine the sort of stock position for your throttle. Alright, other side.